This is Donna and we are live in Nashville um, and we are going um, to talk to Kim today and I um, got to talk to her a little bit yesterday and I tell you she's already just um, given me a deeper thought process to think about. Um, her book is called His Last Words and it's what Jesus taught and prayed in his final hours and um, you make it real you know you make them real people not just historical and so um, it was just great talking to her yesterday and so I'm excited she's going to talk to us today about the book and then tell us a little bit about yourself sure. so Kim I'll let you get started okay so I'm I'm Kim and um, I live in Jacksonville Florida with my husband and my son Ethan and I am a lawyer and I've been a law professor and I have written my first Bible study of what I hope to be many because I love it but I'll have to tell you that's a new love for me. I, um, we lost our son in 2008 to strep throat and he was three and it was very surprising uh, and shocking and really tragic, but it brought me to know God and it brought me closer to God and you know, rescued by Jesus. And I, I'm so grateful that it has brought a relationship with, with Jesus to me and to my family and um, but at the time I didn't know the Lord and so losing Austin led, led but it really led me to study my Bible and I love to study my Bible and I love to talk with you about how you can study your Bible too yeah. um, but we'll get to that I'm sure yeah so yeah. let's talk a little bit about the book um, his last words so um, tell us a little bit about like writing it and then what do you want people to get out of it yeah sure so um, you know the night that Austin died uh, well in the morning he died in the morning but you know if you've ever lost someone you know that you remember that last moment you know with him and or her and you remember what they wore you remember you know how they looked or even what they were drinking or eating and and you remember such details about um, your last moments with your loved ones and so I was a new believer and I have had someone say read the Gospel of John and I did mm -hmm. and I was blown away by how just beautiful and simple I thought the Bible was a book full of rules and a judging God and perfection standards and you know something I could never possibly understand or perform and I read the Gospel of John and I you could have knocked me over with a feather. It was so simple. Uh, and the love of God. And then I got to chapters 13 through 17. And that is Jesus last night with his disciples. And it struck me like this is it. This is the moment. And I remember that I knew about Austin. Like what he was wearing. What book he chose to read that night. Uh, what sheets were on his bed. I remembered exactly the words that we had spoken together and I got to chapter 13 in the Gospel of John and read it through and then I went back there because I was like this is the moment that the disciples would have remembered completely they would remember what it smelled like what they ate where they sat around that table and I bet they can remember what sandals they wore that night and I am certain that they would remember the words that Jesus spoke and what he said to them. And you know what? Jesus knew it. He knew this was his last night with his disciples. And I, it really struck me because I didn't know it was my last night with my son. But if I had, oh, what I would have said, right? Oh, what I would have said. And so I thought, wow, I really want to know what did Jesus say when he knew this was it? This is his last night. And uh, so I really just poured into studying those chapters, John 13 through 17, and it just changed my life. It changed my heart. Uh, it changed my personality. I finally understood that God loves me. Like even though this horrible thing happened to me, yeah. he loves me like in words I can't describe. And he loves you too. And I want women to know how much God, Father God loves them as precious daughters. And so that's why I wrote the study. I thought, boy, I want all women to know and to cling to these words, just like we would of someone we love. Let's, let's cling to these last words that Jesus chose to speak. Um, 
And so I hope that it changes lives and I hope that women hear how much God loves you um, by these words. So we can feel just your passion. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> no, it, I mean, it's beautiful. Um, so kind of, um, kind of share about your passion and, and how you want to share it with women. Well, I think, I know when I started reading my Bible, I was very skeptical. I, I, you know, I had grown up kind of going to church. I knew about the Bible. I didn't have one. Um, but I know that I had read parts of it or been read the parts of it before. And I just, I thought it was boring and uninteresting. Um, but what I didn't understand was this, that when you, when you give your life to Jesus and you say, I believe in Jesus and he is my savior, you get the gift of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you, that Bible will come alive. You will understand it. You will find it fascinating. I mean, maybe not all of it, not every page, <laughs> not every verse, but you will get it. And, and God will start talking to you, not in voices. I'm not hearing voices, I promise. Um, but God will really speak to your heart and your soul uh, through the word, through the Bible. And that's, Wow, it's powerful. So I would just encourage the ladies who are watching, and even, I guess, if men are watching, but mostly it's us gals who look into books and authors. And so I would just encourage you to try it. Give your life to Jesus and then try it. That's what I did. I was like, hmm, let's see if this works. And <laughs> let's just see what these people are talking about with the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you, it worked. <laughs> it works. The Holy Spirit. Uh, will make that Bible come alive and, and you can do it. You don't need to be a lawyer. You don't need a law degree. Um, it will it will become clear to you. I would encourage you to get an easy to read version. Yes. You know, um, a lot of our parents grew up with King James versions and the these and the thous and shout nots and um, that's a little tougher to read, but there are so many versions, uh, just different translations and many of them are so easy to read. My personal favorite, is the New American Standard Bible. And it's kind of written the way that Americans talk. Um, and so that's my personal favorite, um, probably because that's the first one I really read and understood, but yeah. it is one of my faves. So I would say try it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us one thing um, from the book that um, you might have been surprised about that were either like his last words or um, a part that was just really moving to write about. Sure, I would say there's definitely two things that are personally just so important to me. And first, of course, uh, with a child in heaven is the fact that Jesus told them, I am going to prepare a place for you. And, you know, he doesn't lie. Like if you read your Bible, you'll learn that if, if God says it, he's gonna do it and he means it. And Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place for you so that you can come and be with me. And so Jesus promised us heaven and I can't wait. And I know that I know that I know that I know it's gonna be there. And um, so that is very near and dear to me um, that I have a place in heaven waiting for me um, with Jesus and my son and other loved ones. And so that's first. Uh, and second, what really struck me in those chapters is it says very directly, like, like the heaven promise, I go to prepare a place for you. This is very similar to that, it's very direct. He says, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me. And it also says you were chosen by the Father as a gift to me. Oh, I, and why me? I mean, I think most women would say that, right? We don't think we're special and we struggle with that. And there it is in black and white, Jesus saying, the Father loves you and he chose you as a gift to me. So you could bowl me over with a feather for that one. Yeah. Um, and so I just, I think those are really powerful, really powerful. And of course the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit is all through those chapters. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge power for us. Uh, and I don't think we, I know that I don't utilize it and count on it and, and put it to work in my life every day as much as I could. The power of God uh, with me, that's a little bit too much for my mind to wrap around, but it's true. 
and I just gotta use it more. Yeah. So um, in closing, we'll ask, um, is there anything else you would wanna share with the, um, the listeners and readers, um, either about the book or your, kind of your journey yeah. even? Um, well, sure, I would say the, the Bible study is it is a Bible study. It does have homework, but I want to encourage you not too much homework. Um, and my my goal with the Bible study is that you would have time to dwell over the last words that Jesus spoke. And so it's a lot of a, a chart, you know, verse by verse for you to ponder. And so I want it to be Jesus forward for you to really think about what he said to you. Um, and then a little less of, uh, you know, the author kind of talking about what I think. I want to know what you think. And so um, the study is really reflective like that. And um, just to encourage you that there's a little bit of homework, not a lot. And I hope it'll it'll bless you and bring you closer to the Lord. And, and I think as far as my journey, boy, I'm still on it. And, um, you know, I, it's been 10 years now. And so for 10 years, I have drawn just closer and closer to God and, and really through two things, and that is the Word of God, yeah, like opening my Bible and reading it, mm -hmm. and doing Bible studies. I think that's really important for ladies to get together, um, and just making that discipline of a set aside time for Him. Mine happens to be in the morning most of the time, um, that I just get away and spend a little time with Him, and everything else in my life seems to get a little yeah. smaller <laughs> and get a little less chaotic and a little less stressful and like oh my goodness you know and everything else gets a little smaller and easier yeah. uh, when I spend that time with the Lord so I would encourage ladies to if life feels hard and uh, boy it sure does <laughs> you know to just set aside 20 minutes just 20 minutes to start that's yeah. God will he'll work with that so yeah. I would just pray yeah. that you would set aside that time and start talking to your father who loves you. Oh, that's a great way to end. Thank you so much, Kim, for sharing your story, your book. Um, it does. It's already made me think about um, mm -hmm. how important those last words are. You know, yeah. I don't know that we give them because, to your point, he knew they were going to be his he last knew it. words. Yeah. Uh, so he made sure they counted. Yes, so. he did, and they're really great. <laughs> they're so great, <laughs> and you'll you'll be blown away by the simplicity of it. Yeah. It's so simple. Oh, it's beautiful. And I think our challenge is to pray to have the same kind of passion that Kim has <laughs> um, for the Word and Jesus' Word in the Bible. So thank you so much for joining us. And we will post this over on the blog. Just give us a couple weeks as we um, put them all out there. And we will have links to um, the book, um, her website, and her bio. Um, and we, we know you're going to enjoy it. Oh, so. I love it. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. <laughs>